In this lesson, we'll begin modeling in the construction template. All right, so after our brief discussion of the main differences in the construction template, let's see how it works if we're modeling. We can do some basic problem solving or placing certain elements uh, within the realm of a person who works in the actual construction field. So what I want to do is I want to start off with anything that's associated with my substructure. And as I'm building this out, I want to make sure that I apply it to my, make sure that everything I'm placing, I make sure that I apply substructure to its properties. So substructure, I mean anything within the main structure of the building that's below grade. So we're going to start from the ground and work our way up. So we'll start off with a foundation wall. From there, we'll add some foundations for the wall and then also maybe even some uh, little footings here for other elements within the side. So again, so I'm going to make sure, just like when you're working in any other template, you want to make sure you're on, starting off on the right level. So I'm going to go with the top of footing. So it doesn't matter that my footing is here in the middle, it's an isolated footing, or if it's a wall footing, I want both of them to be at the same elevation, or at least the top of the footing. And I'm pretty much going to make sure they're going to have the same depth as well. So if we jump to an elevation view really quick, just to kind of take a look at how this is going to be broken down before we start modeling, you can see everything that matters to us is where it needs to be. So if I know if I'm doing some excavating and I know how far down I need to de dig, so I know the, how deep the hole is that I need to pour so I can pour my footing, this bottom of footing elevation might help out. Top of footing tells me how thick it is. Also lets me know the elevation I'm trying to achieve with my footing. And these two are going to affect everything else from the rest of your building up. So top of slab elevation, top of foundation. So a lot of the top of elevations and bottom of elevations you might be interested in if you're you know more into the putting things together as opposed to the laying them out uh, discipline. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, we're going to make sure we're on the right level. So we're going to focus in our attention in this area for now. So we're going to start with the top of our footing. So let's get our foundation wall in place. So I'm going to go to structure and just like modeling in any other template, we're going to go for a structural wall. I'm just going to go with the generic for now, but I'm going to go ahead and just draw that out. Really quickly, I'm going to use my rectangle tool to get that accomplished. So I'll get that in place. And all that's built on the top of footing. So with this wall, I'm going to right click and select all instances. I want to make sure that I have the right height and everything associated with it. So when I come in here, you can see my top constraint, my, my bottom constraint is the bottom of my footing. Well, I want to switch that to top of footing. For my top constraint, I want to switch that to the top of my foundation wall. So that should give me the correct height, which here says eight feet. So I'm happy with what we got. So we'll really quickly place our footing for this wall. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the right level, top of footing. We'll go with, actually we'll go with the wall footing. And now all I need to do is select my walls, like so. So we'll add one more footing and then we'll kind of compare this and see if there's any adjustments we need to make, see how things are, are laid out and then see if they're positioned properly. So we're going to go with our footings here for the interior. So those are more of our isolated footings. Again, I want to make sure I'm on top of level and I'm just going to place these guys like so. Now I could have used my tool up here to place, uh, place them at points but or at the column grids, but I'm perfectly content with doing it this way. So once I have these in place, I'm going to hit escape really quick to drop my tool. And I'm going to jump to, let's say, a south elevation view. Let's take a look at our placement here. So I'm going to switch up my view a little bit and add some color to this to make it a little bit easier to read. So as we break this down, we know that as long as we're placing these elements on the right levels specific to our discipline, they should be placed properly. So we'll start with our foundation wall. I know that this should this technically should be the top of my foundation and this foundation wall actually rests on top of my footing here so the two dimensions I'm interested in are this one and this one and it should be top of footing and also top of foundation wall and then it's exactly what it is see so it works out for you so as we're modeling uh, in one view we're creating several views it's just like working in any other template uh, when we place this you might notice a little difference here uh, this is my foundation for my wall, and the depth on this is only 
12 inches. So the bottom of this particular uh, foundation might be a little bit different than our isolated ones, which are actually 16 inches deep, which makes those six inches deeper. And that's how you get that little jog down here. But if I wanted to make sure I have some consistency in this and I wanted these to have the same depth, just like when we're modeling in any other template, I'm going to right click. I'm going to select similar or all instances, I'm sorry, in this entire project. I'm going to edit its type. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to create my own. So we're going to say this is 16 inches. So I'll go six inches. I'll add six inches to that dimension. We'll say okay here, we'll say okay there. Oh, we actually got to make that change. So foundation thickness, one foot six inches. This lets me mess with the construction and all the depth and everything. So we'll say apply and okay. And you'll see here we've got now have a consistent uh, elevation amongst them all, but I can automatically adjust this elevation here, not a problem. Grab it. This should be my bottom of my footing. And let's see what happens if I move that. And boom. So now this aligns with the bottom of my footing. Everything matches up nicely. And my drawing is pretty consistent. I know the elevations of everything. I know how things look. And I can also jump to a 3D view and check things out. So you'll notice right now things are kind of uh, see-through, kind of blocked out. And that's just because I need to adjust this right here. I have superstructure shown. So again, we're working with substructure. So when I click on that, it'll bring it back to its full view. Now we'll get into working with this a little bit later. This is more of our phasing, but to make sure that we are, uh, you'll know that you're on the right uh, phase or phase of your construction when you see it in a consistent view and your elements aren't transparent. So we've got everything modeled out what we need or as far as this lesson, you can see that the concept is basically the same. It's just about different dimensions and different uh, things you're concerned with within that particular discipline. So what I'll do is I'll kind of finish out this substructure. I'm also going to click on it. I'm just make sure everything else is assigned to the correct yep, substructure. So I'm going to add uh, some foundation slab here or basement slab, taking the same approach, making sure I'm on the right level. And I'll even add some structure here for the bottom. And we'll, I'll, when we come back in our next lesson, I'll have a complete substructure filled out for us. And then we'll begin working with the superstructure which is elements on top. So I'll meet you in the next lesson.